G'day Fools, I'm Scott Phillips, the Motley Fools Chief Investment Officer here in Australia and welcome to another Motley Fool Stocks in Focus video where we shine the spotlight on the businesses that are in the news, maybe they're widely held, maybe they're just grabbed the zeitgeist and everyone's talking about them and this company might just be one of those with one exception. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. So to help me with that is Motley Fool Analyst Extraordinaire, Andrew Leggett. G'day buddy, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, and I'm pretty sure the correct way is to pronounce it as Lee S. If I'm wrong, <laughs> I'll use the excuse that it only IPO'd last year. Okay, so it's a relative in you, and I like that. Lee S, or uh, I guess, so L-I-S. Uh, probably, uh, I was going to say one of the stranger company names I've, I've, I've been across. I've been doing this long enough to have seen plenty of strange company names. It is one of the more unusual ones, though. It strikes me, is it is it the actual chemical formula? Oh, is it lithium sulfide, lithium sulfur? What's what's the story? Lithium sulfur, yeah. So okay. it's the name is basically, you know, a periodic table. <laughs> Which isn't super useful unless maybe you want to make a point and make that your, your whole business. I am always mindful of businesses that name themselves really, really specifically. It's great when you say, this is what we're laser focused on. And then when things move on, you're stuck trying to say, oh yeah, no, no, but we've moved on because we're now this thing. Uh, when, when the US company Radio Shack started to move to other things, uh, Radio Shack was probably not, not the world's best name to have, but plenty of businesses have made their own movements on that basis. Mate, let's talk about Lee S, I think we're going to call it. I, I did look this up before, before the call, and here's the first line of, of the description I found on Google. Uh, Lee S Energy is a battery technology based on lithium sulfur chemistry where boron nitride nanotubes Da, 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 da. Now, I was I was lost pretty much at Lee S. I, I didn't get much closer as I moved on, but I'm glad you're here to help us because this is, I mean, battery technology, right? I don't know if there's anything hotter right now than battery tech. Um, there was times when it was cannabis stocks before that. There was graphene. Uh, battery technology, lithium more broadly, seems to be where it's at at the moment. That brings opportunities for growth and upside. It also potentially for the wrong company, the wrong place at the wrong price might just be the hottest of hot things. And often when you do that, like the cannabis stocks before and others, it can be a very long and painful way down the other side. So I'm not going to try and guess which way this is going. I'm going to firstly, or get you, get you to give me a view at the very end, but give me a better sense of what this business does. My description hasn't done it anywhere near close to justice. What does Lee S do? Yeah, so you've effectively described the technology that they're using. Um, Allegedly. And to echo your point, that the, the market does go through these themes every now and again where it just focuses mm -hmm. on something. It's like, this is the next big thing, which yeah. in a couple of years later, it usually turns out not so great. But um, right. yeah, so Lee S Energy, they're looking to develop and commercialize this advanced form of lithium sulfur battery, which they say is okay. dominant and better than the lithium ion batteries that we have in our phones and oh, okay. such such commonplace today. So just okay. so a bit of background, they IPO'd at a price of 85 cents. It's been a mm -hmm. roller coaster since then. The uh, they actually, Soon after listing, the share price was at like $2.40. And I think this wow. goes to what you're saying about the hype behind, mm. you know, anything that has the word lithium in it at the moment. Uh, yeah. It's since come down, its share price today, I just had a peak, is around a dollar. So okay. that's a that's a pretty big pretty big rise and fall there. Um, in a year and a bit. So yeah. like I said, always be a little little bit cautious when someone's trying to sell you the, uh, the, the, next, the next big thing, not to get too carried away. But anyway, on to lithium sulfur and why mm. is that a big deal? Um, nice. So lithium sulfur, it. I'm trying to put this in the simplest possible way. Is meant to be. You explain to me, mate. Make it better. very simple if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I, I, and and I'm not a I'm not a chemistry <laughs> kind of major, so I'm not going right, to right. get you know the the whole boron nitrate nanotube <laughs> things. It sounds like something <laughs> Tony Stark would use, you know, does, in his Iron Man suit, but yeah. Um, yeah. Lithium sulfur batteries, so they're considered to be much more powerful than lithium ion batteries. Um, okay. And some estimates have them at being able to store up to six times the energy at a, at a given weight. So you know, okay. two, two identical batteries, one lithium sulfur, one lithium ion. The lithium sulfur should, in theory, be able to store up to six times the energy. So that sounds like a big deal, 
right there. That's extraordinary um, change that can bring that to market. If you think about the commercialization, if you think about solar panels or even the battery technology we have, each generation tends to make, uh, you know, it's, it's a much more uh, often cheaper or higher capacity or more efficient or all, all three. Uh, a, a 6X, I mean, that, that's a game changer, right? In terms of battery technology, think about powering your home, a car, um, uh, the grid. If you can do something like that, that, I mean, that is a quantum shift in, in what we can do with, with energy storage. Yeah, it's massive. And to highlight this point, so in 2020, um, Monash University, it does seem like this is an area that Australia may have a little bit of the little bit of a jump in, and maybe that's because of mm. you know our mining background and the fact that <laughs> batteries, at its most part, are just a bunch of um, you know materials that are used to yeah. conduct the electricity. Um, mm. Monash University in 2020 created a lithium sulfur battery and tested that on the smartphone. And it was it was able to continuously to so power a smartphone continuously for five straight days. Now I don't know anyone's Samsung Galaxy or <laughs> yeah, iPhone right. that has you know that doesn't need to be charged for five days. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of and and Lee S is you know if you listen to them they have the jump on this technology. They think that mm. they're mm. at this point where they can commercialize this. So mm. that's the general bull case is you've got this great shift in battery technology and then this company saying and we think we're closer to it than anyone else um and there's always an advantage in being the first mover uh there's also other advantages to lithium sulfur there's uh, you know people said there's a cost advantage um and in more environmentally friendly so when you think about what it takes to mine sulfur it's far more abundant it's easier and cheaper to mine then and it doesn't need the resources to dig up like it would the traditional cocktails of rare earths mm, your nickels mm, your cobalts and all of that type right, of thing right. so higher storage cheaper to mine effectively mm. in theory cheaper to build um and then you add that to this kind of bit larger macro landscape of mm. you know battery technology is something that's going to be in increased demand as more and more of the world focus on decarbonization because mm. that means more things are going to be electrified because electrified can be developed through clean renewable sources uh mm. but the problem with many of those clean renewable sources is that you do need storage to cover it when you know they're not able to generate as much so uh mm. in fact if you look at Lee S's prospectus they've said the market could be worth as much as 71 billion dollars by 2025 right. um so that's only what three years from now <laughs> yeah, um it's a big right. it's a big number now they were saying the lithium ion market but they're okay. using that because that's the market they're trying to disrupt um makes sense yeah so and also you got to also take in mind i'm somebody who looks at a lot of ipos i'm kind of at the advisor at ipo insider at the motley fool uh it's worth pointing out that companies always try to present themselves in the best and most positive light within the they laws, do. obviously, that um, yeah, ASIC provides. Yeah. Um, yeah. So don't get so carried away. But even if you look elsewhere or it, just mm. think about it, you can see that demand for batteries and battery technology is going to increase in the future than what, from where it is today. So that's the general bull case. We have this game-changing technology, a company that's leading yeah. it, yeah. And it's a big, emerging, growing market that they're looking to take advantage of. It's remarkable when you think about, I, I, as you're talking, I was thinking about a 6X result. And maybe it's not, maybe it's more, maybe it's less. But even think about, you know, the, the, the big batteries, the Tesla battery in South Australia and others, the big kind of grid batteries. And you say, okay, well, there's a day's worth of power in there. If that becomes six days all of a sudden, that goes from maybe we can do something if there's a short blackout to we can probably fix most problems that, are, that would otherwise be caused with generation within the best part of a week. And so it really does mean you go from cool little extra bit of storage was kind of nice through to actually it becomes a mainstream grid option. Now, as you say, neither you nor I are chemists. And so that's part of the challenge with trying to work out which promising technology is the final one. Uh, I'm old enough to remember Betamax and VHS battling it out. Uh, also old enough, by the way, to remember when phones were powered by things before lithium-ion batteries. I want to say it was NICAB, but I could be completely wrong. Uh, you have to take the phone, the battery off the back of the phone, put it in the charger, and then put it back on the phone. That's how old I am. Uh, mate, but uh, let, let's let's go to the bear case. We've done the bull case, and you've done it really, really nicely. 
you made the case for the potential for both the technology and the company. But if you're looking at buying shares now, what are you just telling people to be careful of or maybe might dissuade them even from buying shares? Yeah, so it has a great story like I just highlighted and I because it was just like, tell me the bull case, I put that story out there. Yeah, absolutely. There's a problem though in that currently it doesn't have a product. So that, that, it's yeah, still okay, very much... Cool. Okay. Yeah, it's still very much an idea at the moment. It's it's largely a company right. that is going to be doing R and D still to okay. try and build this product and hope that it gets to the point that it can be commercialized and then be sold to customers. So you're probably a few years right. away at the very least of seeing this company make any sort of, you know, operating revenue. Um mm. so that that's that's one, you know, tiny issue. Uh, another, and there's, there's also other, other problems here to think about. Um, mm. you know, Bill Gates, probably one of the richest, most well-connected and smartest people that is spending their time investing in clean energy technologies, yeah. even wrote a book yeah. about it called how to avoid a climate disaster in that book. Mm -hmm. He has said that he has lost more money investing in battery companies than he thought that he ever would. So okay. if someone who has that amount yeah. of knowledge of the industry, who has access to speak to the best scientists, the best entrepreneurs yeah. is still losing money in battery technology, then again, you need to take a step back and think, okay, maybe this simple formula that the market's given me that uh, battery mm. increased battery demand and increased use of electric vehicles equals enormous returns isn't a sure thing. Uh, another thing, um, the thing between the, the old quote between the difference between between theory and practice. Um, <laughs> I love that one, Yogi Berra. Yeah, like there, there's an old there's an old joke with nuclear fusion that for the last thirty years it's been thirty years away, and that you know <laughs> right. in thirty years time it'll probably still be thirty years away. Uh, yeah. For all we know, lithium sulfur is one of these things that sounds great on a research paper, but yeah. can't make the shift to like an industrialized commercial scale. Mm -hmm. And there's good reasons to, to think about that. So when you look at one of the key criticisms for lithium sulfur is yes, they can typically have more energy than lithium ion, but mm -hmm. the, the sheer amount of energy that it has can often put the battery under so much stress that the life cycles of those batteries becomes very short. Oh, interesting. Right. And just as this, the 6X in storage is a big deal, that means nothing mm. if you're needing to replace that battery, <laughs> you know, three yeah. or four times in the time that you would have to replace a lithium ion battery. So think about an electric car. Right. You're dry, you've paid, um, you know, you pay, I, I don't know exactly how much. Let's just say you pay 80, 80, 80k for a, a Tesla Model 3. You're driving down the road, you know, going, hey, look at me, I'm awesome because I'm driving a Tesla. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the battery just gives out. And it's like, but I only bought mm. this like so long. Now you have to call, now you have to get your battery replaced, put a new one in. Right. Um, whereas if you just yeah. had a lithium ion battery, you'd be able to keep going. So that's there's always two oh, sides yeah. of the equation. The storage is just one of them how long you can use it for is the other. And so far in practice, that's what has been mm. keeping lithium sulfur from being commercialized at an industrial scale. Um, now, mm. Lee S believes they have technology to fix that, largely in the way of the uh, the, the nanotubes that they, they like to mention. Um, and there mm. are some small supply kind of concerns that could be risks regarding that in itself, but I'll leave that right. till they actually have a product that they're trying to sell. Um, and I'll just keep this more theory based because that's where the, the company is. Mm -hmm. um, they believe they can fix this in a way that you get the storage benefits of lithium sulfur, but the life, mm -hmm. the lifespan of a lithium ion. So if they can do that, that would be really good. And that would go a long way to making this a usable technology rather than a technology that is a great idea like nuclear fusion. No doubt it might actually be happen one day, but no one has any clue when. Uh, the final thing that I will talk about in the risks is, and we've already touched on it a little bit, 
is that the next big thing doesn't always mean the next great investment. In fact, Warren Buffett's made his living from avoiding the next big things too. You know, it's meant <laughs> that right. he's been ridiculed a lot, um, but then mm. often been proven right. Uh, just look at uh, you know, if it, his comments around the dot-com dot com boom. And he actually yeah, made a great exactly. one there as like, if you invested in airlines at the time, and you know, you would have lost a lot of money. Uh, the same with cars, you know, in his, uh, his biography, The Snowball, you know, instead of buying car manufacturers, you would have been better off shorting horses because <laughs> that was a better, that, that would right. have had a better outcome than actually investing in these cars. Yeah. There's no doubt airlines and cars, yeah, right. enormous, enormous, you know, game-changing technology. Mm. But mm. as an investor, you wouldn't have seen the benefits that have accrued to society come through to your bank account. Mm. And this is something, you know, wider to think about in regards to, because the ASX has a lot of lithium hype at the moment. Anything with lithium in its name mm -hmm. is going absolutely nuts. Companies that previously weren't in lithium, are, you know, saying, hey, we're going to start mining lithium because people just go, oh, awesome, got to buy. Um, mm. It's needed. It will be needed. Yeah. Lithium is a commodity, um, just like everything else. So therefore, it is. There's no guarantee that it will actually lead to any form of, you know, shareholder wealth. Because for that to happen, mm. a company needs to generate a significant return on investment. And if you can't, mm. if you don't have a lever to to lead to that excess returns, then it kind of doesn't matter. You're not. You may not be losing shareholder value, but you're not gaining any either. Um, yeah. You know, now, Lee S is, you know, not a lithium miner. They're going that next stage to actually build and develop a value-added device. So there is that potential that they could. But in saying that as well, you also have to accept that once this technology is proven, there's likely going to be all sorts of competing technologies of people doing the exact same That's thing right. because. Yeah. Now there's yeah. a playbook. Oh, okay. Well, now if we do this, it's going to work. And then you get other mm -hmm. scientists that may have better ideas. Yes, they did it well. But now that I can see how it works, we can do this better by doing this. So yeah. there's a lot to play out here. Um, you know, It's got a great narrative. But when you dig below the surface and actually look at the realities, we've still got a, still got a long way to go, I think, before we can go, yes, this is definitely going to be a winner. I like that. Now, that's the bear case. And we find ourselves with two very extreme, maybe even the most extreme range of outcomes we've had so far on this Stocks in Focus series. By the way, uh, we have a full playlist on this YouTube channel for Stocks in Focus. You can go right back to the very first one and you can keep watching it after this one and more will be posted to the website, to the to website, to YouTube every week. Uh, Stocks in Focus there as well. Plenty of great stuff you can find on YouTube. Lots of different series with our favorite investing books, Stocks in Focus, Stock of the Week, Media Appearances. We've done some special features before. We've got another one coming up with Andrew very soon. So stay tuned for that one as well. Um, mate, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a challenging one because on one hand, you're saying, hey, someone talked about the, like this about Amazon, I own shares in Amazon, or Tesla. I don't know, I do. Tesla, for, for the said, yeah, but it's got to do X, Y, and Z, right? It's got to be this, it's got to do that. You know, I mean, sure, big opportunity, but really, is it going to be able to be successful? And you go, oh, I don't know. On the other hand, you've got a million and one biotechs, each of whom are desperately and sincerely trying to find the solution to a lot of health ills that we still haven't found the answer for. They taught shareholder money repeatedly in the best of intent, but still as an investor, you haven't done anyone any favors by losing a small fortune trying to find the next winner in the biotech space. So you've got this really broad, massively wide range of potential options, uh, potential outcomes, I should say. And then we have Lee S. I can absolutely see, as you mentioned those pros, the massive opportunity that comes with a brand new battery technology that is a generational change in terms of storage, weight, price, I assume, uh, that really can be a massive, massive, massive game changer for the grid and for the households, for cars, the whole box and dice. And if this company can do it, man, the sky's the limit. On the other hand, as you say, this could just be a commoditized result, right? They could prove out a technology and still not make a buck from it, even if they do prove it out. So a massive, massive wide range. Some investors right now are saying, 
I'm not taking that chance no matter what. Others are saying, oh man, lotto ticket, I'll do that. Our job is to try and work on not only just the range of outcomes, but also the probability of those outcomes and try and work out whether investing today is a smart idea. Nothing is guaranteed either way. We could say no and it could go fantastically well. We could say yes and it could bomb or some other combination of those, those, uh, those outcomes. But our job is to look at this and say, yeah, I think it's either market beating from here or going to lag the market from here. Your job's even harder, mate. I'm laying this on thick because not only are you trying to work out the underlying business itself, but this is such a hot sector. The share price could double or half next week, literally, let alone in the three to five year time period that we normally look at. So I'm going to roll that together and, and uh, give our viewers in particular a really good sense of how we approach this, but also the, the sheer range of outcomes. But then I'm going to ask you, over the next five years, if we sat here in February of 2027, I said, Andrew, were you right or were you wrong? Would you tell me that it's likely to be a market beta or do you think Lee S is going to lag the market? Yeah, I realized when I was planning for this video that I really dug my hole, dug myself a hole <laughs> when it came to this like final section. You because, massively did. Yeah, let's just say I believe there exactly. might be 95% chance that this company does nothing. The 5% that it actually yep. works yep. out is likely to, I could be right. Uh -huh about those probabilities, but we just happen to be in one of those five out of 100 scenarios that it works out in. Totally. And in those yep, situations, yep. you're going to see probably an enormous share price increase. And everyone's, and I'm just going to look like a yes. complete idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this all comes down to, you know, like you said, the kind of contingent probability. Is there going to be increased demand for batteries? And I think the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Could lithium sulfur mm -hmm. be a solution in that? I think yes. And then you mm -hmm. get to, is Lee S going to be the winner in that part? And that is not so clear. And you know, as you know, the more kind of events your probability is contingent on, the lower your your confidence level should be because that's just what the maths right. tells right. you. Um, so yep. it's an interesting company it's trying to fix what's going to be a big and important problem. I like that. Um, mm. However, before kind of investors decide to invest in them, it's it's worth realizing that this is an early stage company, pre-revenue. They don't even really have any major product or anything yet. You are not investing, yeah. you're buying a lotto ticket. And that, and that goes to what I just said about the potential payoffs, you know, like we know in, in lotto more likely you're going to win nothing. But the time that you do win, you're gonna win a lot, a lot of money. Um, mm. So that's kind mm. of what you're looking at here. And if you're thinking about, you know, taking this really high risk on, keep that lotto metaphor in mind when you're thinking about mm. A, whether it's right for you, and B, if you are going to invest, how much you allocate it to your portfolio. Because this is a company that could just completely blow up in both directions. Mm -hmm. It could blow up and be worth zero. It could be blow up and <laughs> worth many multiples right. of what it's on now. I personally think, and this is where I'm going to make this prediction that may come and haunt me in the future. Excellent. That over that <laughs> five year down. time frame, looking at yep. kind of just the various, you know, the emerging nature of the company, the, you know, the industry dynamics that exist, the industry dynamics, I think that might exist in the future. Mm and all the various risks. I, I think that on the balance of probabilities, more likely than not over five years, that Lee S will probably underperform the market. It's very especially good. at current you, prices. Mate. You've like, done a, a very thorough prices, job. I should add. Yeah, you, you know, a very thorough job of explaining both the business, the risks and opportunities, the threats, but also the way investing is done. It's so true. I, I would be surprised if we don't see it double and halve two or three times in that five-year period, it may just be a matter of, as you say, the sentiment that happens to be around lithium at that point, somewhere between December 2026 and February 2027, will almost certainly be the deciding factor, right? Other than the underlying business in five years' time, maybe they've got a product. Maybe they've got a prototype. They're probably still not selling it, or maybe they are. Um, but there will, be, there will be just as much sentiment, expectation, and either hype or despair impacting the share prices. There will be fundamental business uh, operations and simple financials. So it's a really, you have dug yourself a massive hole. You've made your job very difficult, but you've done it 
extremely well. So thank you for sharing your expertise and your research with us. There you go, viewers. Hopefully you've enjoyed finding a little bit more about a company who I now know how to pronounce, at least we think we do. And are I going to say each other as is right? Therefore, we're both right. If we're wrong, don't tell us. Tell somebody else. But there you go. Lee S, L-I-S on the ASX. A lotto ticket. Maybe a massive opportunity. Probably not. And somewhere in between will be the reality. Andrew, thank you again for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you, viewers, for spending your time with us and learning about the company. On behalf of Andrew, myself, and the whole Motley Fool team, until next time, Fool on. Thank you.